Howdy, folks. Welcome to Retsu Talk, episode 31. Wow. Uh, how, how, how are you? I'm good. You know, in the Jewish religion, our podcast would now be a man. Hmm. Pretty cool. Is it a, is it a circumcised podcast? I think that happened around podcast 10. No. Okay. Yes. Good. Good. So we are at a deficit of things to really talk about this week. Oh, no. But fortunately, we have crowdsourcing on our side. Oh, good. This is a Kickstarter podcast, I take it? It is, yeah. And we've raised many, many questions. Oh, man. This is awesome. I don't even know where to start. I'm so happy. Hey, by the way, I um, I have a, a redaction or an apology for you. For me? For you. Okay. I'm, I, I'm going to just have to admit it. Um, mm. MacBook Pro cannot stream well. <laughs> uh, no, I, I really investigated it, and I, I figured out it, it is just like, once the encoding starts, the CPU gets bogged down, and it's just... Mm-hmm. Not doable. You, you really needed to. You really need a machine that'll marshal it out to the graphics card. So, and I don't have that. So, does that mean you're retiring from streaming? No, I think I'm just going to stream garbage. I'm going to just really own it. You're just going to really stream Cookie Clicker twenty four seven. Even that doesn't stream very well. Honestly, <laughs> um, no. It's funny though. Isaac actually works the worst of everything I've tried. Oh. Um, capture card stuff tends to work the best, I guess. Um, and I'm still kind of tweaking that, but. So, so anything con- you would put on consoles? Mm-hmm. Anything that I don't actually have to play on the computer itself, I guess. Gotcha. Yeah. Well, I saw your Bioshock tests, and those seemed troublesome. Yeah, no, that that was... I, I had to fuck around with the streaming settings some, you know? And it's mm-hmm. still not great. Max Payne 3 worked better. I think I could tweak it around so it's not such a big issue, but... Well, it's because he's really drunk all the time, kind of... Stuttering and stumbling, so it looks natural. One thing I was thinking of doing... Well, that's true. One thing I was thinking of doing, by the way, was just recording along with the streaming. So even if the stream itself doesn't work out great, I can at least take the audio from the stream and then take the better recording and put that up later. You know what I mean? So... Yes. You know, you gotta work with what you've got. Or, you know, that or I'll just bite the bullet and buy the fucking desktop PC already. Kickstarter. <laughs> Um, I, I sort of finished Max Payne 3, by the way. Oh, uh, what are your final thoughts on it? I like it. Uh, I feel like, story-wise, it's probably worked out worked out to be the best of the Max Paynes, in a way. Is that saying much? No. Um, <laughs> but it's very... I like Max a lot in the third game, because I feel like he's, he's kind of a down-to-earth action hero. You know, he's kind of like a guy who's like got a lot of problems, he's dealing with them in the wrong way. He kind of overcomes it pretty easily and all that, but you're, it's like, it's better than, I guess, the other stuff where, oh, a bunch of people, my family got murdered and I'm out for revenge stuff, which is like typical action hero. This is a little more like, I don't know, it's, it's interesting, and I think if they had gone a little better with certain aspects of it, it would have been a lot better, you know? It had a mm-hmm. lot of potential, and it only realized a little of it. How was the gameplay? A little repetitive. Um... It's the first couple of games, and I mentioned this last time, you know, were more kind of down to earth. You didn't feel like Superman or, you know, it's kind of like Die Hard 4 versus Die Hard 1. <laughs> you know, where Die Hard 4, he's like fighting jets and like throwing cars at helicopters and shit. And one, he's pretty just a down guy to earth, yeah. Yeah. Well, like well, Die Hard 1, he's just a guy in a building who's pretty good with a gun and kind of clever. Which mm-hmm. is kind of like Max Payne 1 and 2 were sort of like Die Hard 1. And 3, there's a lot more like crazy stuff Max does, which kind of takes you out of it. How many times did Max say yippee ki <laughs> Not very many. Okay. Well, that unsold me from the game, then. I'm sorry. <laughs> it's okay. I, it's, 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 not, it's a hard sell, anyway. Because it's a pretty old game, too. Um, also, I've heard really good things about the game Brothers. Brothers? Mm-hmm. What is this game Brothers that I have not heard of? Um, it's a game on Xbox Live Arcade, and there is a Steam port. Um, it's a co-op game, and it's really meant to be done with the game cat being pad. It's co-op gameplay, but you it's single player co-op they call it. You play an older brother and a younger brother. You control each independently with both thumbsticks and the triggers, more or less. Hmm. You solve puzzles. Um, there's a story element to it, 
Uh, there's no spoken word. Everything is sort you're, of body. You're yeah. just describing Mario and Luigi Dream Team. Am I now? Or maybe one of the Mario and Time Partners things. <laughs> oh dear. I, I think I just mixed two different titles together. But go I, on. I, I, act, I actually think Brothers subtitle is Max Payne 4. Okay. But, um, Good. No, uh, it's apparently... I haven't played it yet, actually, and I, I've watched a bit of it. Um, it's in, it, it looks really cool, and it's apparently incredible. But the one thing is, apparently, the PC port, if you don't have a dual-stick gamepad, it's kind of dodgy, just because there's no great way of doing it. I heard about it because um, my best friend, Total Biscuit, has been uh, right. talking, talked it up on Twitter and such, and I watched his video of it. The only thing I'd say about his video is he goes out of his way to be vague about spoilers... But he mentions doing something in the game, which really sparked my interest, but it's something he admits proudly, if you've seen his what WTF is, mm. um, which then got me thinking a little too much about the game, and now I think I might know what happens in it. Are the brothers related? That's it. That's the big surprise. <laughs> yeah, I can see why you wouldn't want to dodge that. Yeah. But anyway, I'm really interested in playing it. He, he basically says something along the lines of, um, let me just throw something out randomly, just so I don't give anything inadvertently, even though I don't know anything about it. Like, it's like, I'm I'm not ashamed to admit this part made me, let's just say, really horny. And then you start thinking, well, what could do that in this game? And then you start figuring Incest? it out. Incest? Well, there you go, exactly. No, but the, 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 I'm making a joke, but what he really says, basically, uh, made me think more about, like, what could potentially happen to the game, so I might be going in unspoiled. So anyway... But uh, it looks. I watched twenty minutes of it, and it looks really cool. It's like a lot of cooperative puzzle solving, you know. And I don't know. I think I might check it out. It's like I think like five, ten dollars. Five dollars. Should I get maybe. an Xbox One for it? No, if you have Steam, you can play it. You just need to hook up uh, a dual stick oh, controller. I thought you it. said it was an Xbox Arcade exclusive. No, no, no. It's also on Steam. All right, let me look this shit up then. Allegedly, it's hard to play on PC if you don't have that controller. Gotcha. Yeah. Yep, here's it's 15 bucks on Steam. Mm-hmm. I also saw Papers, Please for the first time. It's a fun game. Well, not maybe fun's the wrong word. It's interesting. It is very interesting. I played a different game from the same developer, whose name I can't recall, where you control the newspaper, and you drop and drag articles to say, like, what goes to print and what doesn't. So, like, you have to kind of support the government to keep your, uh, you know, to keep up appearances and not get fired. Oh, yeah, the prequel to Paperboy. Yeah, 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 exactly. Yeah. <laughs> also known as Harvester 2. Right. <laughs> How are you liking Harvester so far? I don't understand it at all. I mean, in a good way or a bad way? In a... I don't think I've seen enough of the game to be able to judge it. Yeah. Yet. But I, I'm wondering if this is all going to somehow gel together in a fucked up way that makes sense. I won't say anything. Um, okay. It's interesting, though, knowing the big thing behind it because there's still stuff i i still don't quite get how that ties in you know can i ask you this sure this whole series of, this is uh relates to a question someone submitted to these fmv style games back in the day sure what where was the market for them why were they so why were there so many of them you have to understand it was new technology and it was very cool so you take dragon's lair is, like, one of the first, like, laser disc games, right? Or is the first really popular one, I should say. And it was, like, this notion when you walk into an arcade, it's, oh my god, it's a cartoon I can play. I can see that after, say, one game. The first FMV game. But then but, once people react to it, logical people react to it? Well, then, you know, you, you get this whole notion then of people who, like, have, you know, little movie studios. They typically can't break into the movie industry, so they think... Well, why not the game industry, you know? So you hire B-grade actors, you do all that stuff. And, and then you make plumbers don't wear ties, right? Well, that's, yeah. That, that one I, I can't figure for the life <laughs> of me. Right. I, it's like they didn't even really try. And, and like I said to you, like, um, I mean, she was a, a, a wrestler, but, you know, that uh, the woman who plays Jane, you know, it's, she probably wasn't, it wasn't like, she probably wasn't that cheap, you know what I mean, to hire her and stuff. I mean, at least the other people posing for pictures, I guess you could say, I don't know, you pay them scale or you pay them an extras kind well, of I wages. thought these were all people who were hoping, I think that was what the uh, the woman's bio yeah. said on the game, was using it as a way to break into the industry. Interestingly, too, I started reading about Harvester. It's the girl who plays Stephanie um, was also hoping that would launch her uh, acting career. And uh, how'd that go? 
Well, <laughs> I mean, <laughs> she's now known in the industry as Scarlett Johansson, so I think pretty well. <laughs> a little plastic surgery. Um, you know, one interesting thing about Harvester is none of the body actors and the voice actors are apparently either all or like 90% different. So, like, the guy voicing Steve is not the guy acting as Steve, and even the full motion parts, they voiced over. So they saw how well Darth Vader worked in Star Wars and said, let's let's replicate that. Except that their mouths moved, so the voice actors really had to match everything up. Well, they should have watched Drunk History and learned from that. I think, yeah. I was, just, I was watching Drunk History, I'm like, how do they do that? But, I don't know. Hmm. At any rate... <sighs> Well, drunk history works the opposite, right? Where someone does the voiceover stuff first, and then the actors kind of have to match it up to the voice, right? I'm assuming as much, yeah. Right. Well, I mean, this it, it's probably easier if you're in a, a, a you know like a, a an audio studio, and you're if you have the video in front of you, you can at least get a sense of the timing and how to say it. But if you're on a set, I have to imagine that's a lot harder. That's true. That's a fair point. So everyone tweets solutions as to how people do this. <laughs> But I guess that's a good enough segue into the um, the Twitter things we got into, right? Yeah, lots of questions. Crowdsourcing our content once again. Mm -hmm. We're both looking at a Google document, trying to sort it all out. Yeah. Well, we talked about streaming. Let's start with at G Frodo, who said, "How about a discussion on the parallels on how streaming has evolved compared to Let's Plays evolving?" Has Let's Play really evolved? Actually, if you want to know the truth, I think, I think. Uh, monetization is really what's driving Let's Play nowadays. Uh, and, and you see a lot of things that Let's Play is being driven by, at least on YouTube, you know? It's more mainstream, in a manner of speaking. No, I, I mean, uh, directly, uh, it's being financed, so there's a mm. lot more... Right, there's right. a lot more geared toward that, you know? A lot more like, um... What do you call it? Launch day titles, AAA titles, it's a little less, you know, um... The scare cams obviously respond well. You see more of those, a lot more like sub -aspects. Starting to see a little bit of Let's Play being used as a promotional tool as well, that game companies reaching out to people. I'm not, I don't know. I'm not I'm seeing degree. that. The big, the a big very little I, bit, but I'm wondering if that could expand in the future. I know indie developers are cool with Let's Play because it helps promote yeah. the games. The bigger ones, Nintendo, it's interesting that Nintendo went to the, you know, because with the whole monetization thing, they did dabble in it, right? Because they did have a, an officially produced uh, Xeno, I think it's Xenoblade Chronicles, Let's Play. Uh, and they, I, I think they had a promotion with the Runaway guys, where they were playing, was it New Super Mario Brothers? No. For the Wii U one, I think. I think so, yeah, where they yeah. played it and to promote the game and whatnot. Yeah. So, um... But will that become more of a thing? I don't know. I guess, it, I guess in some ways it will, although... Recently, you had the Amnesia devs asking people not to watch the Amnesia Let's Play that came out. Right. Recently. You know who did it, of course. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, Voldemort, right? Right, exactly. Now, yeah. um, but to be fair, apparently that was a miscommunication between Frictional, the publisher, Chinese Room, the developer, and the Let's Player, so whatever. Yeah. But two different heads talking. More or less, yeah. But it is interesting now. You do get the notion that you have a developer, and not a small one either, who's like, whoa, whoa, whoa this Let's Play or this video is actually might hurt people's experience of it, right? And right. Now, the interesting thing, too, is you talk about... I wonder if you... Because what happened with me with Max Payne 3, interestingly, is when I rented it, Disc 2 didn't come with the rental. And I was like, kind of... You know, like the gameplay got a bit repetitive. I ended up watching a long play of Disc 2 just to see, like, how the story ended and whatnot. Because that's what I was kind of more interested in. So I wonder, too, if Let's Play... Um, it could be a tool for promotion, but I think, and where we don't want it to go, I would assume, is let's play as substitute product, to put it in business terms. Hmm. Playing the game so people don't have to pay to play it themselves? That's kind of what I, I worry about, more or less, hmm. yeah. You We're know. not seeing that, though, in Let's Play very much, because you see all the time with in threads people saying, hey, this game looks awesome, so I went out and got it. Or, That's... you know, a couple people told me, hey, I got Mario Galaxy 2 because I saw your thread and it looked really fun. That's the thing I usually say, you know, yeah. especially if something awful. It just it, I do kind of think if anything is gonna fuck up Let's Play, it's kind of that. It's gonna be the the mm. game developers, especially the bigger ones, coming out and saying we want to control this, you know. Right. And I mean, and I don't mean to the degree I'm to the degree I'm talking. I was talking about previously, where I think you have a right to say how your content's used, but more that like, you know what? There's a lot of money here. I don't understand why I'm not making it kind of thing. Yeah. You know what I mean? 
And you're also seeing some a lot of developers taking a firm stance one way or the other. Like yeah. I remember, there was this uh, Reddit post on the Let's our Let's Play thing that said, these are the people who said it's okay to monetize Let's Plays of their games. Yeah, and to be fair, Rockstar... Is, and there's quite a lot of them. I think Rockstar is one of the big ones, too, that was like, yeah, feel free. Right. If I remember correctly. Um, but yeah, like Devolver, people who did um, Hi- uh, Hotline Miami, they are like, mm-hmm. go nuts. Um, Minecraft, obviously, has it in their terms of services. The guy who made Papers, Please, someone posted in the Sandcastle recently asking them for permission. They said, yeah, go ahead, monetize it, post it, whatever. Yep. Yeah. So is this enough of a sample size to be able to say, seems like most developers are fine with it and it won't be a factor? Now, but the question, too, was where does streaming get into this? Ah, yes. Streaming's a lot more difficult to monetize. You know, I mean, because if you're using Twitch, I know there's a subscribe option. Which I th- I think the trick to that is you have to get like really fucking popular before you can ask people give me five bucks a month you know yeah somebody told me that the guidelines for partnering there aren't really that strict and you can just apply um, I haven't tried to yet but supposedly it's not that difficult to get into it but I mean is that that's not like the same as a YouTube like partnering with a network where you say like I'll get a cut of the ads that's like it, or is it. Oh, I'm not sure how the actual logistics of it work from there, no. Because as I understood it, if you want to make money off streaming with Twitch, there's an actual like um, subscription model where your viewers can pay to subscribe, and then you get that payment while Twitch gets the ad revenue. But Because um, I noticed like, um, Darkside Phil uh, has a subscription model. And the, the way the subscription works, <laughs> I believe, is like you can set what viewers can and can't do. So like if someone subscribes to you, maybe they get ad-free or... Uh, which kind of fucks up the business model I just described. But, um, or they can't right. chat without being a subscriber. Or they, you know, or they get notified. Or, or it seems like, like it would, an- I mean, if you have fans, it seems like something that would annoy more people than get them to want to support you. Hey, you gotta get paid, Like, hey, right? pay me to make your experience less inconvenient. It's doing <laughs> such a cash thing that seems like detrimental to that. We thought that about Let's Play years back, you know, but look where That's it is true. now. Yeah. You know? I think some of the social aspects of streaming are interesting. Well, streaming is technically more ephemeral, too. Because you want to oh, yeah. be there while it's going on. You know? yeah. you can watch it. Yeah, you don't see that, a but... whole lot of people watching the archived version or versions that you put on YouTube compared to your other content. Sure. At least in my right. experience. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. And that, well, that's the thing, too. And I, I know it's with like, your streams and this sort of thing I'm trying to emulate where like, you bring people in and it's like a call-in show. Um, right. And the video, yeah. I mean, I, I still... As cash as it gets, I still Thank you. am not in love with the whole video game being completely ancillary to it, but it doesn't really have to be either, you know? But it's good to, yeah. like, talk to people during the downtime and stuff, you know? Well, people used to say Let's Play was very similar to, or um, you know, sitting on the couch with your friend, playing a game in, for an afternoon or something. I think streaming's right. more emulating that than Let's Play. It depends, I guess. Yeah. No, I agree with that. Because Let's Play, you're the star of the show, no matter what you do. Streaming is more like you can take things from the audience, and there's more very direct involvement at runtime. We should we should try that Ritsu Prey streaming shit again sometime. Oh, we should. I'd be down. Yeah, why not? Of course, I'd have to do the actual streaming, being the PC owner. I could do that with... I mean, it's, it's play... I, I think I could do that. <laughs> if you have a good 10 frame per minute video, then we can watch it there. <laughs> oh, God. Oh, my goodness. Oh. Uh, what can you do? What do you think about... The whole, is streaming, and this is more of a sociological thought I just had, but mm-hmm. sure. is streaming taking up social time that is more valuable to spend where you have, you know, something more tangible with actual people you can hang out with? Does that make any sense? Do you mean, is it better to, like, be on a Skype call with a bunch of people playing a game rather than recording by yourself and talking to them later on comments? No, I mean using streaming more as a social activity than real-life social activities. Having it be a substitute for that. And is that bad? Yes. <laughs> uh, okay, I mean, I have obviously a strong opinion on that, but I don't know, maybe, what are your thoughts on that? No, I agree. Um, sometimes I wonder if I use streaming to, you know, just kind of hang out with uh, people on the internet when I could be hanging out with people in real life, but in Alabama, you know. Mm. Not as many opportunities to go out and do stuff. So part of me is wondering, am I using streaming as a replacement for that when it would behoove me more to 
you know, just more actively go out and try to do more social stuff in the real world. I I don't really believe that there is a true real life substitute, or excuse me, a substitute for actual real life. Hang oh, I totally people. agree with you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I think but you need he, that tangible aspect. Yeah, and I think the Skype call is okay. I think I mean, you know, you you talk to your friends on the phone, you talk to people there. I I don't think it's a bad thing per se. I think if you do it, and I'm not saying if you, you're using it as a crutch. Yeah, or like I I can't get along with people in real life, but the internet understands me. Yeah. I think is something you should address. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. It, 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 it's like anything, I suppose. It's like if you take anything to like the nth degree, it can really kind of mess with you. And there's Moderation. certain, like, yeah, yeah. You know, it's like, or you see, you see like people with really fucked up like opinions. Especially when it comes to video games or, like, on the internet, you know what I mean? Like, yeah. about society. And, oh, yeah, and if you have a fucked up opinion, if you express it online, you will always find someone who is with you. Right. And I think which is not of, reflective of real life. Right. Or it's like, um... It, yeah, 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 exactly. I, I mean, it can also have... A, it depends on your exposure to people, you know? Like, because if you hang around with too many like-minded people, you get kind of stubborn. And this is coming from a very stubborn person, but, um... Sure. And I think, like, your exposure to new and different ideas can help that. Now, you can get that on the internet, and but I, I still feel like you need that real-life interaction with people. You know what I mean? Or, I think or we're take, seeing eye-to-eye on this. Yeah. Take another way, too. You know, like, those internet arguments you get into? People get into, I should say? Um, yes. A lot of times, those are kinds of things that are really very easily resolved face-to-face. You know? You it's really easy to miscommunicate or read text in a certain voice that isn't there. Absolutely. And I think yeah. you, everyone's probably experienced that with email at some point in their lives when they've emailed a person that they know and someone's like, what the hell did you mean by that? And you're like, no, I just meant this. Like, oh, because it sounded like... No, I just you know meant I mean? Hitler had some good ideas. Right. Like, tactically. <laughs> Actually, I think tactically he was terrible, but... Um, oh, well, okay. You know, it's only when I'm wearing my SS uniform do I uh, <laughs> really examine that. When you're modding Danganronpa, right? Right, right, right. Oh, God, by the way, there's the announced a new game. I heard about that. Mm-hmm. And thus I mean, ends- to be fair, you did back 100% of the Kickstarter request for Danganronpa 3. <laughs> You're literally, the, the only donor was you. While naked. Yeah, uh, while, while naked in your SS uniform tattoo. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, no comment, whatever. The only good news I have yeah. is Orin Ronin doesn't have the capture equipment to do that one, because it's Vita only. But Fadul, mm. who's helping him on the LP, does. So, I don't know. So it's inevitable. I think, honestly, though, Oren's mentioned, I think he wants to move on to other projects after Danganronpa 2. So, I guess in 2016, we'll see what that is. <laughs> but, um, Forward to that. Uh-huh. They're still not done with Chapter 2. It's killing me. Anyway. <laughs> so, uh, do we cover the, the topic? Do we go on to the next question? I think so, yeah. All right. Uh, how about from at FLMarlins85... Baseball fan. Have you guys had discussion about doing another joint LP again, or are you satisfied with the wrong praise? Um, we discussed it, I think, right? Oh, yeah. I've, you've mentioned off and on again the police knots thing. Yeah. I'm a little worried about that one lately. But um, that said, um, yeah, I, you know, I'm a weird guy, and I keep getting other ideas that I want to try out, too, but I guess police knots is the one I really should just, like... Mm-hmm. Knock it off and do. I just been. You're one of those people who likes to stay very busy at all times. I um I have I also suffer from what I describe as shiny bauble syndrome, where like I get an idea and I start to explore it, and but then something else can come along and I'll just forget the first idea and explore the second one, mm-hmm. and but then occasionally I get one that I just lock onto and then I get sort of obsessed with. But um. So what's your current obsession? Um, kanji. Hmm. Yeah. Do you know our logo is a kanji symbol? I do. Um, I can't remember if we discussed it on a stream or a podcast, but um, it is the Chinese symbol for failure. I think it can be interpreted as selfish strike, um, and the individual character radicals comprising it are shellfish and winter. No. I, actually, is it, I think it might be shellfish and winter, but um, whatever. When we do the D&D podcast, can my character have a move called selfish strike? Of course. Thank you. That's. I think that was in one of the Final Fantasies, or possibly four of them. <laughs> right. Um, sorry, what was the question again? <laughs> Joint LP projects. I don't know. Um, so Police Knots is up there, I guess. Uh, I, I Mario Galaxy together off and on. 
I was considering sort of doing a more casual let's play. Oh, yeah? Yeah. Um, like, even just, like, because I rented um, Resident Evil Operation Raccoon City. So I was thinking of just, like, recording it and then seeing if it seems vaguely entertaining and just saying, fuck it, and I'll just talk over it, you know? Mm-hmm. Um, just to, kind of getting back to what we've talked about in the previous weeks, um, about, like, Let's Play taking itself too seriously, maybe. So maybe just, like, trying one that's not garbage, mind you, but just, like, let's not worry so much about 100% Comprehensiveness, completion. covering everything. Yeah, let's just fucking talk and have fun. I, I, again, don't want the game to be ancillary or anything, and I wouldn't like to deviate too far off of things for too long, but, you know, like, just... Fuck it, like, you know... Kind of like, actually, I mean, Dead to Rights Retribution we were, was kind of like that, right? I mean... I think so, yeah. Yeah, I mean, I, I didn't bother getting all the badges. I played on Hardest, although thinking back, I don't really know why I did. <laughs> <laughs> to prove something. Yeah, but it was just sort of like, let's just get this out of the way kind of thing, just because you might be interested to dead, in Dead to Rights Retribution, but... I come to Dead to Rights for the story. I, I, well, I certainly do. And the passion that the developers clearly put into it. I come for the story, just not in the way they intended me to. <laughs> That's fair. Ah, what else we got? How about... Well, somebody said... Uh, Gnome Bitten said, You guys like MGS, right? And he linked a DeviantArt page, and it's it's a picture of a skimpily clad uh, big boss in the vein <laughs> of uh, Quiet, that oh, controversial well- character. Well, that's, that's, that's for cosplayers, as I understand it. Yeah, yeah, clearly. You right. know, if you're going to have the whole skimpily clad woman in a context where it's not remotely practical, I think it's only fair you have Big Boss show a little ball sack every now and then. You know what I'm saying? Well, it is the desert, right? Yeah, it's in the desert. Mm-hmm. When you would want to supposedly, you know, cover yourself to not have skin cancer. Well, you know... It's funny because I always find myself in the middle of those debates because, like, and what usually happens is sometimes something, not this, sometimes something, like, inno- like, innocuous or something I don't agree with comes along, but then some idiot will take take that stance too far where rather than, it's not just such a big deal. It's like, oh, you fucking feminists are destroying video games, which then makes me have to side with the thing that I didn't care so much about. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Forcing an issue. Yeah, it, it kind of just ruins the whole argument for me, you know what I mean? Yeah. So, like, I mean, but that said, the quiet thing is, is I don't understand that uh, at all. Yeah, like, it seems pretty... Not the um, arguments against it, but the fact that it is a thing in the game is f- just dumb, right? Well, you know, it's, what's odd about it is, like, it's something that, you know, it's like one of those video game things, it's like, oh, scantily clad girl, all right. But then Kojima comes out and tweets that he's... Trying to make he her wanted more... her to be more erotic was his original quote, and then he right. kind of backpedaled on that and said, no, what I meant was... Or no, he said the whole erotic thing, and then that, no, we want it to encourage cosplay and such. Which right. is kind of a shallow way to support your character. But then he backpedals on that and says, no, I meant sexy, and there are character-driven reasons why she appears the way she does. It's kind uh-huh. of kind of weak in my Kojima, you know? <laughs> Well, Kojima in general is just, it's, he's so... He's a very odd, yeah. When it, Especially when it comes to sex. It's like... Yeah. He'll just throw in these things for, like, no great reason. And, you know, like, um, like MGS3, do you know the trick with the survival viewer? With Eva? Where you can be yeah, like, like you look at her down her cleavage, and then at the end you look at her face, because character development. Oh, I didn't know that one. Oh, yeah, yeah, okay. Yeah, when you're on the bike about to drive out at the end, you can do the whole R1 thing and very clearly oh. looks directly at her face. I see. But, you know, I, you know what I kind of did like about MGS3, though, is the first, um... It seems like the first Kojima game where the character wasn't such a huge perv or he had, like, some weird hang-ups about sex, meaning Naked Snake. Right. Like, do you remember when Eva's trying to seduce him? I think it's, um early on in the game, right before you fight Ocelot, if I remember correctly, when she arrives on the bike and you're talking and stuff, and he's, like, kind of standoffish and weird about it. Yeah. Like, I thought that was interesting, because usually his characters are all about that. Like, especially look at, like, Gillian Seed. I know you haven't played police stuff. Jonathan Ingram is, like, that on overdrive with sex. And, um, I don't know, like, Solid Snake is pretty, like, you know, he'll always kind of, like, I don't know, he'll walk in on Meryl and so she has a cute butt and all that shit, you know? Yeah, and Raiden has come pouring out of him whenever he takes hits. 
<laughs> That's well, you know, honestly, that was my favorite part of it. Um, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so it seemed a little know. extreme, is all. I don't know. I I just I don't know where he's. I don't know where he's coming from. And there's this this yeah. story. There's a story about him, which is not well publicized. Where apparent, and I don't know how true this is. It's like an urban legend kind of thing, but. Apparently he uh, went to like a Japanese bathhouse or something with a bunch of a couple of Konami execs, and there is like some way I guess or some peephole type of thing you could see into the women's one, and he apparently refused to look. He didn't think it was right hmm. or whatever, you know. So then you think, oh, okay, that was a decent kind of classy way out, and then you look at like um, all the other stuff, and it's like I don't get this guy at all. Yeah, really hard to tell where he's coming from. It, it is. I think, though, a lot of people who like Kojima games, because he tends to be weird in a lot of ways, uh, you know, in terms of story, breaking the fourth wall, you know. And I think it happens a lot with game developers in general. They tend to try to excuse it as to say, like, well, Kojima's just an odd guy, so it's okay. And it's like, that's not quite right. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, it, it doesn't just excuse It's like um, the easier argument there is, like, Suda51 um, will make a section of a game where you do nothing but walk for, like, ten minutes. And it's, like, really fucking boring. But everyone's like, oh, it's Suda51. He's crazy. He meant it to be boring. But it's still boring. You know what I mean? Like, it's still not a good thing to have right. in your game, even if it's... Doesn't really intention. excuse the issue, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It, that's more or less what I'm getting at. Um, yeah. I like... I like... In general, I, I don't know if I've talked about this out. Like, I like I liked early Kojima better than later Kojima. Like, before he made Konami shitloads of money with Metal Gear. Solid. And he was always successful, but that really became, like, his flag... Like, it was, like, a PlayStation flagship game. Really, tons of money on Metal Gear Solid. After that, I feel like Konami didn't take any reins with them, and that's where you get the really nutty shit like Metal Gear Solid 2, Metal Gear Solid 4. Uh, you know, 3, I did like the story, although it did go a little off the rails at times. Um, mm -hmm. But if you look at, like, Snatcher, Police Knots, even the first Metal Gear Solid, especially Snatcher, you feel like there's an editor there. Like, there was someone who's like, no, 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 like, don't. You know what I mean? Like if I can see that, yeah. Yeah. Like, if you actually look at um, SD Snatcher, which is apparently the original plot, it's much longer and much crazier, you know? Whereas if you look at Snatcher for the Sega CD or the game that came out, that it was one of his early games, it does look like someone told him, look, we're running out of budget, you gotta cut it short, and you gotta keep it a little simpler, you know? There's not, it's not as much off, it's not as off the rails. Police Knots is kind of similar. Metal Gear Solid, Metal Gear Solid goes there a little with the Fox Die virus and some of the, um nuclear arm armament stuff, but still not crazy, crazy, not crazy town, not arsenal gear and controlling the world's information and nobody's well, wrong. Probably at the time they weren't thinking about this big multi-game story arc kind of thing. But you when know, one I, was being developed. I won't, right. I wouldn't think. Yeah. And I don't, I don't buy that Kojima did either. I especially don't buy it because, um, he said once that Metal Gear Solid 2 was, uh, was inspired in part by Napster. And the whole, like, um, the thing where the government, like, or people were, like, trying to shut down Napster, and that, like, made him think about controlling information, which gave him sort of the idea for Metal Gear Solid 2, which is where Arsenal Gear is more about, and the Patriots are more about doing that than, say, just the usual steal nuclear weapons, threaten the world type of plot, you know? Right, yeah. So I, I don't buy into that he had this all planned out on, by any stretch of the imagination. Mm. I don't think I think he's smarter than just making it up as he goes. I think he he can figure out like a general timeline, but you, you, things do get retconned. I Once he got all the money, did it give him license to go nuts? I don't even know. I don't know if it's about the money or so much as nobody at Konami wanted him to tell him, like take it, real, yeah. like pull it back in. This yeah, what I mean is he suddenly became kind of a powerful person in the industry. Yeah, well, everybody so hard Konami, to question him. Yeah. Exactly. I, I, Konami makes money hand over fist with Metal Gear Solid. Of course, they're N2 and 3 and 4. They're not going to tell him, you know, don't do this. Although, you know, it, it, it's funny, though, because you would expect, honestly, like you do see it with um, Western companies, if Kojima or a game designer had said a similar thing about Quiet, you'd expect someone at the company to say, Listen, this did, this came out wrong. This doesn't really represent what the final game's going to be about. It's like, do you remember? Do you remember the Tomb Raider controversy, the new Tomb Raider game where the guy licks Lara Croft, and people are like, "What is this sexual assault?" Blah blah blah. One of the producers came out and said it like was that kind of scene, and then the company stepped forward and said, "No, no, no, it, that it's not that kind of scene." And by the way, in the final game, it is not. It, it you know they, they kind of came out with a broader statement to kind of play damage control. Because you and I, I, I would think with Konami you would see that here, you know, but you didn't. So I don't know if that's just how much they trust him, or if maybe the 
Jack, maybe Konami just doesn't particularly care about it. You know what I mean? Like, they figure no one's going to boycott Metal Gear Solid or anything, so whatever. I don't know, honestly. So, hope that answered your question. <laughs> That's it. I do like Metal Gear Solid, but uh, not as much as I used to. Interested to see where it goes. Actually, if you wanted the truth, I, I kind of wish you would knock it off and go back to, like, non-Metal Gear titles. Yeah, like Phantom Pain, I guess I'm interested in, but just less so. And wait, when did Big Boss, like, have a an artificial arm? I think that's part of, well, there's the Phantom Pain, and then there's whatever's, or, uh, was Phantom Pain the before or after? Uh, I when? thought Phantom Pain is, like, the latest of the old story. It's pre metal Well, there's, like, two segments. There's a 1974-ish oh. part. Then okay. something happens to Big Boss, and he's out for, like, nine years. I just feel like, I mean, we've seen Big Boss, allegedly, in Metal Gear 1 and Metal Gear 2, talking about pre-Solid, and we've right. seen him again in Metal Gear Solid 4. And in 4, I could buy, he has, like, a Luke arm, because they have crazy technology. But in the original Metal Gear games, I don't remember him really having that. He had the eye patch always, but I guess, you know, because in the 70s, you're not going to get a great-looking artificial arm, or a prosthesis, you know? I don't know. I guess we'll have to see how it plays out. Well, and also in Metal Gears, didn't he get incinerated? Yeah, there was that too. Small issue. Right. He gets burned alive at the end of Metal Gear 2. Um, and I think blown up at the first one, but, you know, you, you, give, you give every video game villain a mulligan. Yeah. Give him the benefit of the doubt. More or less. Um, do you want to move on to another question? <laughs> yeah, how about... At Ant Citizen, when will Slowbeef's website be going back up? Are there any special plans for it? Um, yes, there are special plans for it. I've just been lazy about it. It's one of my million things to do. My old host pretty much was like, we're not going to do personal website hosting anymore. So I went to HostGator. Uh, but I lost my original copy of it, and it's still up on web.archive.org. So it's one of those things, like, at the very least, I want to pull my old Metal Gear strategy guide back. Um, but The first I bought, screenshot Let's Play. I no. Um, uh-huh. It was a strategy guide. Uh, I don't know. Um, <laughs> what was I saying? I, but I, I bought the domain RetsuPrey.com uh, way back when, just because I didn't want anyone else to buy it, you know, and be yeah. like, you know, and I, have I, a PR nightmare on our hands. Well, like I don't know. Let's play is one thing, but RetsuPrey. I mean, that is pretty clearly us. Yeah. Yeah. You know. Yeah. I got you. Yeah, so whatever. I mean, I don't I don't care if other people do things they call Retsu Prey or anything like that, but you know I mean, that's kind of well, the, the royalties should come our way. Absolutely. You know, you know what I'm getting at though, right? Like I'm not saying don't don't do videos that are like Retsu Prey's and call them Retsu Prey's or anything like that. I just don't want oh, yeah. somebody buying RetsuPrey.com and making a ton of money off that. You know what I mean? That's just that's a ton of money. Yeah, so that all those bucks that we get, no. <laughs> anyway, uh, How'd you amass so, your fortune? Bought RetsuPrey.com. <laughs> That's it. So, That's all I had to do. No, I just want... I was planning to do maybe, like, a Chip and Ironicus thing where you have just the hub site where you just, like, maybe... Just we copy have, like, their little... source code and change a couple yeah. colors. Yeah. Absolutely. Here's yeah. some videos. Here, here's some videos we made. Here's a little blog or news or whatever. And the one thing, too, is that's always bugged me about being on YouTube is we're still at the mercy of YouTube. So, mm-hmm. you know, all it takes is, of course, like, enough strikes or whatever and then suddenly we're back to square one so at least if you have like a place where people go it's like in case that ever happens it's like we can tell you okay we're starting up a new channel or we're 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 down starting to an weeks. esports network now yeah basically yeah, we're like talking that. talking over starcraft i don't know <laughs> that would be a valid career i think uh esports needs more color commentators and we could be the ones that just don't know what's going on at all but pretend that we do <laughs> I think ESPN had that. Didn't ESPN <laughs> 2 or 3 used to have, like, Quake tournaments on late at night? I thought that was a thing. Yeah, I thought so. But it didn't last It's more like something that would be on the ESPN double-digit channels. <laughs> I don't know. I, uh, I I don't know that I could do color commentary on a lot of competitive games because I don't play very many competitive games. We'll just talk about how the games are garbage and how the players are bad. <laughs> <It's> like... <laughs> yeah, why not? <laughs> yeah. We should do more co-op stuff, though, because it was fun to play Resident Evil 5. I wish I wish we'd recorded that. Definitely. You should. Well, you need to get really. get a good PC, get Saints Row 4, mm-hmm. then I'll get Saints Row 4, and then we'll be set for life. Got it. Boom. Do you have a PS3? Here's that. I do. Okay. You could get Saints Row for that, too, but I hear it's a better game to play on PC than console. Oh, really? Yeah. Oh, interesting. 
frame rate issues and such on consoles, I believe. You know what I found that with? Actually, Walking Dead. Remember, like, the, you know, the Walking Dead game? Oh, yeah, that game's incredible, yeah. P- PS3, frame rate's awful. Oh, for real? Yeah, you know the pharmacy scene? Yeah. Uh, com- like, really dropped to, like, single-digit frame rate. Oh, wow. Like, st- stuttered all over the place, where I'm like, are you fucking kidding? Like, this isn't Dead Rising, like where you're doing a lot of, like, real... I mean, I guess they are doing real-time rendering with the actual graphics, but it's a static cutscene kind of ish game, hmm. you know? Hmm. Like, if something's not working, you have a lot you can do. There's not a ton of player input happening. You know what I mean? Like, so I, I was kind of stunned by that, but I don't know if that's a PS3 issue specifically or just a bad console port in general. Uh, I don't know, but it was... That's actually... I, I hadn't come back to it in a long time. I really should. Oh, yeah, you need to finish it if you haven't, for sure. I, I haven't. They're working on season two, I believe. Oh, There's cool. DLC for the first one too, but I haven't played it. I really like the first one, or what I played of it. You know, yeah. definitely. At MF Mega, uh, at MF Mega Zero X, whatever happened to the Retsu Awards? I don't know. Fair question. I don't know. Um, I, I know did re- get some. Uh, we met the guy uh, Matt, I believe was his name. Met him at PAX again. Mm-hmm. Uh, he gave. He told me a few of the categories and the tentative winners mm-hmm. but i haven't heard any official results stuff so yeah. matt if you're listening post that shit somewhere son it was a shame too because he seemed like he had a really neat thing going where a lot of people like corn track was involved yeah. uh, dan mcneely you know like that was i was kind of in, i mean i know it's kind of like self um patting yourself on the back kind of thing in a way but it sounded really interesting so yeah. I, I was kind of curious to see where it went i was too Oh well, okay, sera sera. Um, at a lore sought, do you uh, do you guys plan to do that other Gibson Flash called Move or Die in the future? Possibly. I played Move or Die. Um, have you recorded it? I have not recorded it. It's Move or Die is a little long, so I, it takes a bit to play through and figure out if there's more branching pathways or whatnot. You know. Mm. Does it have that patented Gibson weirdness though? Um, from what I played, yes, it does. Um. Not as fucking out there as Ambition, certainly. And Basil Pike was crazy, too. You know, this one seems mm. crazy, just not to that level. So, okay. prob- but probably. It's, it's, it's enough. And I think, I think I'd like to bring Hourglass back in for that, because I liked him on uh, the last episode of Ambition. Yeah, he was good to have, definitely. Definitely. Good guy. All right. At Hazard Paid, who were Diabetes' picks for the NFL Division winners and the Super Bowl? And I guess you can contribute this as well. Um, okay. AFC East, Patriots. AFC South, Texans. AFC West, Broncos. AFC North, Bengals. NFC East, Cowboys. NFC South, Atlanta, Falcons. NFC West, Seattle. NFC North, Packers. Super Bowl, Seahawks, Broncos. Super Bowl winner, Broncos. That's exactly what I was thinking. Yeah. Are you excited that the Super Bowl is going to be in New Jersey? Oh, is it Giant Stadium? Yeah, they say New York, but come on. Oh yeah, I never understood that. Like, how did New Jersey get so fucking shafted on that one? <laughs> like, the fucking stadium is in, like there, you know. Anyway, that said, uh, I've, I'm anticipating a lot of traffic. Whenever there's so that's a jo- fun. Can you <laughs> say is there not a transit thing that gets you there? No, no, there is. It's just um, you take Route 17 to get to Giant Stadium. and uh, no, I mean, like, public transit you can take. Well, actually, you take three. Whatever. Um, oh, yeah, there is public transit. And I do take public transit, but I take the bus, which means I am bound to traffic as well. So, no, um, I don't know. It'll be interesting. I, I'm not... I, I watch football, like, when it's on, and I'll go to games. I'm not super invested in it. I think it, sports in general, like, I like them, and I'll watch them, and I'll get interested in, like, Super Bowls and World Series and the big games... Or the playoffs, too, you know? Yeah. I just, I don't follow it day to day, and I'll, I don't understand fantasy football for the life of me. Fantasy football's fun. It's not how fun does, to, for other people to hear being talked about, but it's fun to play, I think. How, how does it work exactly? Okay, so you have to be in a league with like 8 to 12 people, and then you do a draft. It's similar to how the actual football draft works, kind of snake style. Or not similar mm-hmm. to the draft, but um, it's a snake style where you go from 1 to 12, then 12 to 1, as far as picking your players. Okay. You pick different positions. You pick a quarterback, you pick a running back, wide receiver, a defense, special teams, and a kicker, and a tight end. And you 
just go back and forth, pick and pick and pick and, and then you have your roster. And then as the games are being played, players on your team accrue points as they gain yardage, as they score touchdowns and such. Then the computer or system you're on adds up all the points that your team has. You're pitted against someone else's team. Whoever has more points wins. Oh, and you can trade players and things like that. Yeah, you can trade players, bench them, put them on waivers, free agent them, whatnot, blah, blah, blah. Oh, well, that does sound pretty easy. If you play and there's money at stake, it will make you follow the season more closely. That makes sense. Not just a particular team, but you have players from all over the league, so you'll be watching, you know, a, a Jacksonville-Oakland game on Monday night just to uh, see how your players are doing, if you happen to have them, or your opponent's players, for that matter. That reminds me, speaking of money and, and sort of competitive, have you heard about um, Salty Bet? No. <laughs> you know Mugen or Mugen, the fighting engine game thing? Yeah, I saw some great Let's Plays of it back in the day. <laughs> um, someone has a Twitch channel, which is 24-7, of these giant randomly selected Mugen rosters of CPU versus CPU, and people bet money on, like, so you end up with, like, Superman versus Goku and, like, Batman versus <laughs> Ryu from Street Fighter, and they bet fake money on it. It's supposedly really entertaining and fun to do. I, I don't know that I'll be participating, but... It sounds like the nerd version. No, it doesn't sound anything like fantasy football, really. But, um, it's exactly like that. So it's just okay. something you watch on Twitch? Mm-hmm. More oh. or less, right. <laughs> I used to play NFL Blitz back in the day. I liked that a lot. It was kind of like football. Like, it was a football game, but with, like... Really, really simplified. More than that, it was more action-based, you know? Yeah. So, like, yeah. It, yeah, so it was kind of immediate sort of turnovers and, like, you know... For, I think it was like thirty yards to a first down, if I remember, because it that was so right, action, yeah. it was so action based. Like you just gained tons of yardage and lost it immediately and stuff. And it was a little annoying because it was a midway sports games, which means it had like kind of that rubber banding aspect, you know. Like yeah. if you were beating one Mario, team, badly, like Mario Kart. Yeah, and you'd start you'd start fumbling more. They'd get more interceptions, which is kind of bullshit in a way. But it was still a pretty fun game. They actually made a, a PS. I think a PlayStation version of Blitz where you could actually give your players like steroids and shit like that for like power ups. <laughs> I'm serious, dude. But uh, I don't think that did well. I wonder why. <laughs> I don't know. All right, uh, Common Coder SA. Are you guys planning to do more RP streams slash fundraisers? Yeah, I'm down. I was actually thinking of that again. Yeah, recently. Um, I don't know what causes are worthwhile causes besides like a ton of them. Maybe we'll do something for diabetes. Um, about time. <laughs> it's about time you people did something for me. <laughs> I like to do cancer stuff, too. I mean, you know. Yeah. Yeah, my, my mom's uh, an oncology nurse. Was an oncology nurse, actually. So mm -hmm. I got to hear a lot of uplifting stories through my <laughs> life about cancer. All that. <laughs> uh-huh. <laughs> Fun disease. Anyway. Yeah, but I would, I would love to do that again. Absolutely. Maybe we could maybe we could do something innocuous that nobody cares about. I'll let Dead to Rights too, like yeah. the same way. That'll be the only thing we stream. <laughs> um, what else we got? Let's see. Some of these questions are a bit too would require too broad of an answer for the time we have left. So I'm trying to look at some simple ones. Let's see. Um, un oh, uh, how did we meet? I had to go to the New Jersey area for, or the New York City slash New Jersey area for a business thing a few mm -hmm. years back, and right. I told you about it, and I flew into Newark, I think, and you yep. picked me up at the airport. That's right. And um, we were going to say, like, how long it took before we could actually had to resort to talking about the forums, and I think it lasted, like, five seconds. Yeah. Was, no, that, that, that was my fault. That's actually what I said instead of hello. Yeah. How's Let's Play doing? <laughs> I think, though, when we first started talking was back in the day of, like, the early day of Let's Play, um, you were doing um, Parallel Worlds with Lurk Dog, I think. Uh, uh, how do we internet meet, yes. Yeah. And I just IM'd you, because your IM was in your profile, and I said, like, I thought your shit was funny, and I wanted to see if you ever wanted to do a video or whatever. I thought the first time we actually talked talked was back in the day when people would do those 10-person Skype call circle jerk things. That was a blur. And you for were me. on one, and I was on one at the same time. And mm -hmm. I think you mentioned something about parallel worlds there, and then somehow we started instant messaging from there. Oh, okay, maybe that was it. 
I remember um, it was really funny. I was looking back at my PMs, and when I was doing Let's Play Super Metroid, you actually sent me a map. Like, you were like, hey, I like your video. Like, here, like, this would probably help you get through Norfair, because I was having so much fucking trouble with it. Right. Or something like that. Um, <laughs> so, yeah. And you ignored that. me. I did ignore you. No, yeah. You save um, all your PMs? Yeah. Well, I mean, hmm. when, when you're a mod, you get unlimited. It's like your internet scrapbook? Yeah, basically. Good times. No, nah, I just, I don't know. My my PM box, whenever it got full, I would just delete the oldest shit, but then um, once I got mod, it's, you just get all of them, so I just stopped deleting them. And I stopped reading them, too, which is helpful. <laughs> no, I, I don't. But anyway, I don't really not do that. At Tracy Crockpot, thoughts on GTA Five? Excited? Not excited? Will you buy it soon or wait a while? I just shrugged in real life. <laughs> I like the Lost Vikings style of the game. It looks interesting. It looks interesting. Um, I'm not sure where it's going to go yet. I get kind of a Kane and Lynch vibe from it, which bugs me. Because I really wanted to like the Kane and Lynch games, but I really couldn't. Um, I don't know if you ever played those. Uh-uh. But, like... Yeah, like, they, I thought they were interesting characters, and it was an interesting premise in terms of story, at least the first game, and then the game itself was really a big letdown. Um, hmm. So when I kind of see, like, oh, here's your crazy guy, he's a murderer, it reminds me of Lynch, and I'm like, eh, I don't know. You know? I think that's Trayvon, the hmm. crazy guy. Did you, did you ever play GTA 4? Yeah, I did. I didn't, but everybody I've talked to has pretty much universally said it was a huge letdown, and that's um... kind of tempering their expectations for 5. Um, yes and no. Have, like, actually working in New York City, that was a very cool aspect that Liberty City modeled after, you know what I mean? And it's yeah. a very... Well, you were modeled after the main character, right? Oh, of course. Or the main character's modeled off of you, yeah. Right. <laughs> um, it's obviously an extremely condensed version of New York City, you know, where, like, Times Square is, like, a block away from Columbus Circle kind of thing, you know? <laughs> Nuts! I tried to, no, I tried to drive to where I worked, and they kind of skipped that block, and they're just like... <laughs> I'm like, well, there's less, you know what I mean? So, I mean, obviously, it's not Manhattan, Manhattan, or or I should say uh, New York City, New York City, you know? And there's a bit of New Jersey in it, which doesn't quite... Taints the seem- game. Yeah, yeah, basically, but didn't really remind me of New Jersey, you know? By the way, that reminds me, part of Max Payne 3 takes place in Hoboken, and it's, like, ridiculously corrupt to, like, the point where, like, like you're in your apartment and the mobster's, like casing your whole building, like, I want two snipers on the roof, and I want four guys going there. It's like, oh, come on. It's Hoboken. Like, cops are gonna be there. It's, you know. <laughs> but I guess, to be fair, New York City was like that in the first two games, so whatever. Anyway. <laughs> New Jersey doesn't usually get a good rap in video games, so. That's fair. So, excited, not excited, then? Um, I'm interested. I wouldn't say excited. Yeah. I'm interested, too, but I'll probably want to play Saints Row 4 first. I keep hearing that's, like, the best game. Yeah. Next to Brothers. But. <laughs> no, definitely. Right. Um, anyone, anyone you want to end on? We're getting close to the hour mark, I think, right? We are at J- uh, Jam Polinski. Talk about your favorite sandwich. Huh. It's tough. God, I don't know. They're all so good. I like Rubens. I like French dips. Yeah, pulled pork sandwich. Yeah, y'all, right? <laughs> huh? Sure. Those are, actually, you know, pulled pork. Actually, debris po' boy. Boom. Well, I do like me some po' boys. It's a New Orleans deal where you make a pot roast and any of the meat that just falls off into the gravy, you scoop that up like deb- debris, like debris, you know? Right. And that's their sandwich. Bang. Delicious. And your heart immediately stops. No, that would be from the fat the fat sandwiches at uh, Rutgers in New Brunswick, New Jersey. Um, mm. They have like a fa- this was on Man vs. Food once. They have like these incredibly great sandwiches, like the Fat Cat, which is like two burgers with cheese, lettuce, tomato, f- French fries, all on a big uh, hero roll, basically. Or they have the Fat Cocoa with bacon, which is cheese steak kind of steak with mozzarella sticks and French fries, all in one sandwich. You can get that with bacon delicious. if you like. <laughs> they are fucking delicious, especially if you're drunk. But anyway. Yum. Oh, yeah. So those, I think, are my big sandwich picks. Now I really want to get lunch. <laughs> Not me. Hmm. Now I really want to go see a cardiologist. <laughs> <That's good. laughs> 
Um, Let's see. At, uh, at Yif Master. Oh, boy. Uh, yeah. Uh, best thing to ever happen to you guys at a game con? I figured the default response would be meeting the uh, Navigator CEO. <laughs> that was pretty great. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, I I I'm I really like I like PAX a lot, and I, I always look forward to it. Which is, and we won't get into it because it's a heavy topic, and we're nearing the end. But you know, the recent controversy yeah. is kind of like annoying because it's like, don't make me feel you know. You know what it is? I I posted a link on Twitter. It was called Penny Arcade needs to solve its chronic problem, and I think that kind of summed it up for me. Is no matter what you feel about it, it is now reflecting badly on the organization and things like that. Yeah, I just don't get how dumb that guy can be where he's trying to posit that Penny or the expo or the con is mm-hmm. this welcoming to everybody thing. While he, who is half of the face of that posits this completely opposite incongruous opinion. I think it, I think it stems from the fact that, yeah, first of all, it is totally um, at, at odds with each other. When you say we wanted a convention for all sorts of gamers. And I know they meant, you know, desk, uh, tabletop PC console to come together, but mm. this notion of inclusion, all gamers come together and then, people get upset with certain things and it's like, I'm just going to immediately dismiss that out of hand and I'm stubborn. So I'm just going to say I'm right. Cause I think there even has to be a mm-hmm. point where even if you don't get it, you kind of start to think this is thing has really taken on. You life. still have to appreciate, you know, that there's gotta be something to this, that it's yeah. this long. You know what I mean? Even yeah, if exactly. I don't personally get it. Yeah. Because, so you know what, even the the original stupid comic, the original comic, it was a, a one-off side joke. It wasn't even the main gag of the comic, but to defend that dumb side gag so vociferously is crazy. Just let it fucking go. Yeah. That is not a war worth fighting. Even if you don't get it, which is a whole other thing, you know? Because, you know, frankly, too, and even the people now who attack Penny Arcade, even they say, you know what, it's kind of innocuous, frankly. The original comic. Not innocuous, I'm sorry. It's kind of not as big a deal as... It's not what now. they intended... It wasn't the message they intended, but their right. reaction to the uh, backlash, right? The follow-up comment, the merge became what that, became the real source of the controversy. And then three years later, to do the stupid like, I think that I was know. a mistake. That? Like, I think bringing that up was a mistake. You fool! And he, like, if I were, he, yeah, he later tried to issue this apology on the Penny Arcade website, but it struck me as a very disingenuous and kind of slimy attempt at backpedaling on it. I think, I mean, but at that rate... Saying, like, no, what I meant to say is we regretted the entire thing, not just pulling the merchandise. It's but like, you know what? No, I don't get to say that. I don't to be that. F- I, th- th- but you know what it is? At this point, there's nothing he can really do except that. Like, this is the point where he could shut happy. the fuck up. I know, but, <laughs> like, it, it... I'm just saying, going from there, it's like, you know what? You're just gonna have to just eat the crow, issue the apology, which is what he more or less did. And you're right that it comes off really like, ugh, whatever. But at this mm-hmm. point, it's like, there there is certainly worse targets out there. This is, and we really, I don't know. I, don't know. I mean, you're right, but I, I guess part of me is just I really like PAX and I had a great time. And I wish I could just, I, I want to just forgive it, but I know yeah, that... But I don't want to have to, I don't want to go if I have to, like, hold my nose when paying for the ticket price. <laughs> I don't know. You know what it is. I I think too. Like it's a fun event, and the people and uh, the people there are more representative of it, or I hope so. Then. Well, if you watch the Twitch stream of when they uh, said that was their big regret and all the gross hoots and hollerings, you'd be surprised. I the one thing I do like is I I feel like it was one of those things where a few people did it, but it wasn't like a big round of applause or like a standing ovation. Kind it's of hopefully thing. not representative of. Right. You know. <sighs> I thought we weren't going to get into it because it was too heavy. Oops. You you lied to me. No. <laughs> and to that think we were problem. originally going to end on the favorite sandwich question. What sandwiches do they have at PAX? They need better food at PAX, I will say that. Yeah. Especially the Boston one because there's nothing near where the convention center is. Yeah, really. Well, I think that's a good place as any to leave it. <laughs> <laughs> on that lighthearted note. <laughs> eat sandwiches. Do it. And... uh <laughs> Okay. And and try not to say anything that's bad PR for your company. Okay. Unless you're Hideo Kojima, in which case all bets are off. Take it easy.